Welcome everybody to uh, Saturday morning Astro Snap for April. Our topic today is sorting out galaxies. So we're gonna look at some galaxies. To begin with, I'd like to let you know that we have uh, two people who are presenting today. Uh, one is Celeste Artale. Uh, Celeste is a researcher at Purdue, researching, uh, researcher in astrophysics. And uh, we're pleased to have her uh, join our group today. Uh, we also have uh, Vandana Ramakrishnan. Vandana, can you just uh, say hello and, and introduce hello. yourself? Sure. Um, so I am a third year graduate student. Um, at this point, I have basically finished up my coursework. Um, I've chosen a topic of research more or less. And so hopefully soon, I will be starting um, a PhD thesis. So as a graduate student, you need to write a PhD thesis, which is basically um, a mini book almost. Um, the idea is by the time you finish your thesis, you are going to be the best, the foremost expert on the topic that thesis was about. And then you present it to um, a panel of professors in the university and um, they kind of judge it, right? And if they decree that you have done a good job with it, then you pass and you are officially, you know, a doctor. So I'm about halfway through my PhD career and yeah, I'll be starting that thesis work soon. Celeste, can you just say a little bit about your uh, career path? Uh, good morning, everyone. Just want to clarify something. I was born in Argentina, in South America, <laughs> but I'm a mid-Argentinian and mid-Italian. I'm a mix of both. <laughs> so imagine that you have a time capsule and, uh, and you are able to go and visit your great-great-grandparents. So at that time, um, the existence of uh, galaxies was not uh, yet known. So the first task for you is um, to tell me or, what, or think about what, how, how do you explain to your great, great grandparents what a galaxy is? Sorry, what? Uh, are you listening? Yes. Okay. I. I would tell my grandparents, great, great grandparents, that they are like a cluster of stars and they are orbiting um, a center. Mm -hmm. And that center could be a lot of things, so, well, a lot of things. And there are, that they are billions or like billions and billions of stars. So what if your great, great grandparents asked you, why are the stars orbiting? Why are they all being held together? Why aren't they just flying apart? Uh, because of gravity, they're being pulled together by something larger with a bigger mass, like a black hole or something else, something very, very large. Cool. Yeah, well, great. Uh, very nice uh, responses. So what is a galaxy? A galaxy, galaxies are made of exactly millions of stars, gas, dust. Here you see some of the um, images, some pictures of some galaxies. And galaxies, you, you see, vary in, si in size and shape. And uh, yeah, there are thousands of millions of galaxies in the universe. But now coming back to, to the past. So how the first astronomers that detected a galaxy, what were the tools to explain to the others or to, to show what you are seeing with your telescope? What would you do? You can have somebody draw it and paint it. Exactly that. We could draw uh, at that time uh, nice what we are seeing with our telescope. So you see here, uh, this was one of the first images of uh, the Whirlpool Nebula, the galaxy, by Herschel. And see, you, you can see also, so this was the first one, and uh, then in other two different years, Rose uh, got this, created uh, these beautiful draws here for, for the same galaxy. 
And these two pictures here were taken with the uh, cameras, photography cameras and with telescopes. And you can see also in having a camera, uh, we had also some improvements. But now I had another question. Um, why do you think there is a difference in between these two draws or well, between these three draws? Why, why they are not exactly the same to describe the same galaxy? Well, because the te technology advanced so that they could see it better and before they couldn't see it as well. So that's what they thought it looked like. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. The, the telescopes were improving at that time, still now. And we, we are still uh, improving our way of uh, seeing the universe, right? And also, even with this, we, we will be able in the future with uh, much better telescopes to improve the, the view and see more the details in the galaxies. Great. Shall I, shall I say? Yes. We also had a comment from chat that, uh, that said maybe ah. the galaxy expanded would there be much change in a, in a galaxy, let's say in, oh, 100 or 200 years? Would we be able to see that? No, of course we need uh, millions of years to see differences in, in, yeah, in the evolution or the shape of the galaxies. And we will see later that, uh, yeah, it's not something that, yeah, here it happened only between these two, only five years. So in five years, we cannot see uh, significant differences for galaxies. For other things, yes, but not for galaxies. <laughs> okay, so now um, in the, within a galaxy, uh, we have well, what we call morphology of a galaxy. We have different components. So here we have uh, two pictures of the same galaxy. It's not a real galaxy. It's, uh, way to think about the anatomy of the Milky Way, in fact. And uh, yeah, we, we call to this way of viewing a, a, a face on. So it's like we are seeing yeah, from top or what, whatever. And here we, we, we say, we see it uh, edge on what we call. And yeah, you can identify the different components depending on how you are seeing your galaxy. Here, this bright uh, region we call disk is basically all this region we see here with the arms. So here we cannot identify the arms while instead on the, on the left, yes. All these arms are exactly that, as we said before, we is, are full of galaxies, uh, galaxies uh, of stars, sorry, uh, gas and dust. We also see in the center um, what we define as a bulge in this image. And depending on the galaxies, some of them are more elongated, created what we call, that we see here on the left, a bar. And then also uh, some of the galaxies, uh, it's easy to identify a stellar, what we said, a stellar halo that is full of all uh, stars, and uh, many of these old stars are uh, in tiny groups, in tiny clumps, what uh, we define uh, as globular clusters. There is a, also a question in the chat. What is the bar to make it so bright? It's mainly because it's, it's a very dense region. It's a very dense region uh, full of uh, old stars also. And uh, yes, some, I, I won't enter into to the details, but some of them also can uh, have, or most, yeah, all of them uh, have a supermassive black hole inside, so in there. So it's also creating a lot of uh, light. What we have planned now is we're gonna show you a series of 11 different galaxies. We're gonna start with an overall picture, a picture of all the galaxies, and I want you to look at them and decide, we're gonna do this collectively as a group, decide um, the, the criteria that we might use to classify them. So we're gonna try and organize them by 
uh, by three different categories. And one of my TAs, Baha El Shani, will show us the slides. Baha, are you ready? Okay, so everybody, there are our 11 galaxies. You see they have different characteristics physically, different appearances. And so let's just get some ideas. Who's got an idea of, we, we want to come up with maybe, I don't know, five or six different, uh, different things to look at. Um, hi, we could classify them by shape. Okay, I think shape is, is a good uh, a good way. Uh, Megan, you have your hand raised. Well, we can also classify them as the light, uh, the color of the light they're emitting. Some of them are emitting in a warmer tone and some of them are doing in a cooler tone, like blue. Right. Can you say that last part again? There was a truck that just drove by it. I didn't hear you. I'm suggesting that we can do by the color of the light that they're emitting. So like some of them are emitting in warmer tones and some of them are emitting in like cooler tones, like blue, lightish blue. Yeah, yeah, that's another good idea. Thank you. Uh, did anybody else have their hand up? Great, so we have shape and color. When we think about shape, um, what kind of, shapes could we consider? Files. Okay. That's another nice suggestion in chat. Yeah. Classify based on size. Okay. So we have in chat size. We have some that are more spiral. Discs. Okay. Sphere. A sphere. So uh, we're writing these down so we can uh, decide which ones we want to return to. You know, it may also depend on the way we look at them. Are we looking at them face on or edge on? Uh, okay, so we have a lot of uh, things about shape and we talked about color. Anybody else have a, a kind of characteristic that we could maybe consider? We're the scientists. We're, we're, we are defining knowledge. We're defining how we're gonna categorize the world around us. There's a suggestion in the chat, age, which is actually a fantastic suggestion, but a little difficult to do visually. Um, we are right now trying to imagine that we are like the first astronomers who first discovered galaxies, right? And we don't yet have a clear way of measuring age. So we're just trying to classify them based on what we can see. But um, for reference, age is a fantastic idea. It's a very important thing to consider when you're talking about. What about brightness? You know, brightness could be a good way to classify galaxies. Uh, mm -hmm. We classify stars by brightness, by how bright they see to our eyes uh, in the sky. And, uh, you know, that dates back to when people just looked into the sky with their, uh, with their eyes without any tools. Who can think of a reason why brightness might not be a real efficient way to classify galaxies. What would be a thing that might confuse us if we use brightness? Um, maybe because of the difference in like the stars, the age of the stars, and because of the center, since the center is, uh, it could be smaller or could have more stars, maybe because of that. Th those are good ideas. Grant, what did you want to say? Um, light pollution could block how bright it looks from night to night, and um, also air quality could affect how bright it appears. You know that's true as well. Let's let's define our categories here. Let's say let's say we're going to use shape. One was a spiral. One was diamond. One was spherical. I think those are good classifications. Shall we try to use those? What do you think? Anybody have another idea? Well, what's the difference between disc and spiral? 
according to our classification. Let's see, what's the difference between disk and spiral? What do you all think? Are there different kinds of spirals? Megan, you have your hand up, what? What do you think? Spirals can be the example of like the first one on the top or left, that is, and the second one on the top row. The first three on the top row can be very good examples of spirals. Uh, and this, well, the one of the best examples can be uh, on a right hand side in the uh, right hand side, just above the galaxy, which is emitting a very bright blue light. A very it does one. depend on the perspective we see, but here we can identify as this. There are two good answers in chat as well. Um, a disk is sideways. That's a good point. If you're looking at the galaxy edge on, you have no way to know whether it has a spiral shape or not. That's a very good answer. And um, a spiral is more string-like, whereas a disk is more oval-like. Well, then in that case, what's the difference between a disk and a sphere? So a sphere is a ball shape and a disk is oval. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. So we have an oval shape, um, a sphere or ball shape. And what, what should we use for a third category? I have a question. Yes. Okay. Megan. Uh, I do not know in which category we can uh, classify the galaxy, which is on the bottom left in the corner, because it just seems like scatter of. Yeah, that's <laughs> sometimes it's just like that. You get things which are weird and you actually have no idea what to really do with them. It's not always clear cut. That's like unfortunate fact of science. So, Vandana, what do you think we might call that one on the bottom left? Mm. If we have well, I think disk and sphere. It's hard to say. Like I could make an argument for sphere because you have um a glowing circle. But I could also make an argument for disk because you have like a bar which cuts across the center, right? So I could actually think of it as either. Let me ask our okay. students. We have an, a, a disk and a sphere, both of which we have a pretty good idea what they look like. And then we have this thing like on the bottom left that doesn't really fit either of those. In fact, I can't think of a way to describe that. So what could we use for a word, for a description that would mean um, like none of the above or something that is uh, mm, very, uh, it seems unorganized or more random in, in shape. Anybody have a word we could use for that? What was that? Can you go with scattered? Scattered? Um, we can use that until we come up for a, unless we come up for, with a better word, sure. Irregular, that might be good. Let's try that. Either irregular or scattered. Well, let's just use them both. Okay, so. Organic shape, Ooh, I like that. I, I like, like that, that too. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Organic shape. Hmm. Okay, so there's our third category. Now, let's see how well we do. Baha, go to the first slide. We're going to categorize this first galaxy. Oh, can I say something? Before sure. You start? So this galaxy is called M51. The letter M here shows that it comes from a catalog called the Messier catalog, um, which was created by a French astronomer called Charles Messier all the way back in the 1700s. Um, so he listed like 110 objects. And so this is the 51st object on that list. So that's what M51 stands for. And I think it's really interesting because 
Charles Messier didn't actually know that this was a galaxy. The idea of a galaxy didn't really exist back in the 1700s. He was more interested in studying comets and he was just very irritated with these weird fuzzy blobs that kept getting in the way. <laughs> so he listed them. He listed out, like there are these objects in various spots that are fixed objects, they're not comets. And like um, 300 years later, that was one of the very first galaxy catalogs. So interesting historical note. Yeah, great, thank you. Okay, so let's do this in chat. Everybody can vote. All of the students can vote. The TAs don't have to vote. Put your, put your uh, vote in the chat for this first galaxy. The categories are disk and spiral, sphere, or organic or irregular. What do we think? Okay, I, I would say that the, uh, the winning category here is spiral. And so what are we looking at? What are the features that call it a spiral? Just give us, you can put them in chat. What, what's one or two features that we use to define it as a spiral? Uh, when I think of it, when with this the spiral is um, the arms of the galaxies uh, going out and curving around the center. We see these stringy like things that kind of circle around. It's, it it kind of looks like water going down the drain, doesn't it? All right, shall we go on to galaxy, the next one? So Messier 81. So we see a couple of ideas here. We see spiral, I see disc. Well, I have a question here. Okay. It looks like everyone thinks it's a spiral. And okay, I can see that, but I mean, M51 had much more clearly, very clear like string-like arms, right? Um, as you said, Dave, it looked like water going down the drain, but I mean, the string-like arms just aren't as clear here in M81. So why do we still think this is spiral? So someone says in chat, it's a brighter spiral. Megan? I think uh, if we put more focus on like the last few arms, because the densest, the core is so bright that we can't actually see the arm properly. But if we go farther away and see like the, the extreme end uh, arms, we can see they are just going in opposite directions and uh, somehow uh, going around or surrounding the dense core. So here it's not that much clear because I think the dense is more brighter. Yeah, that's a good approach. We have to kind of, we see features that might resemble two different categories, but we have to decide which one is the dominant feature. Which we, we see do? one answer from the chat. It's pretty interesting that says from Roger Sweets, it's string-like, the arms are coiling around and the stars are curving along with the arms. It looks like it's partly disc and partly spiral. If we had to decide which is the more dominant feature, Vandana, you're the, you're the expert. Let's decide if we want to call it a disc or a spiral. Well, after the arguments made about the arms being there and just being faint, I think we can call it a spiral. I'm okay with that. It looks more dense in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but I think a spiral is a good answer. All right, how about the next one? M85, ooh, put your answer in chat. What are we gonna call M85? Mm, I, think, I think sphere. Spherical or sphere is the dominant. And in fact, that's what everybody is saying. What's the dominant feature that we, what's the characteristic we're using with the feature that to call it a sphere? Okay, Megan says a circular dense core, uh, the middle of the galaxy, Roger, the middle of the galaxy um, is ball like. Uh, great. So, sphere shaped like a ball. All right, let's move on to the next one. M87. 
Disc, fear, or organic? What do you think? Answers are coming in. Uh -huh, it it's seems like your ones for this one too. Yeah, we're, we're going to call this one a sphere based on everybody, and that would be category two. And again, I I think we can use the same logic we used before. It's shaped like a ball, so it, it's brighter in appearance. It could be that it has more stars, or it could be that it's a little closer than one of the others. All right, let's go on to the next one, which would be M95. What makes this a little more difficult is that we're looking at some of these from different angles. And we've got one answer. Megan says spiral. Valeria says, missed that disc. We see another disc. So, Disc spiral is the same category. So we, we group those together as category one. Quinn says it, it's a spiral, but it could also be considered a disc. So there seems to be a big disc area in the middle, but mm. Mm. Well, there's another comment. The arms are a bit fainter, but there's the slight string-like characteristic on the sides. I think I'd agree with that. So this, does that mean we'd call it a spiral? I believe so. Okay. But Megan argues that it's still similar to the spiral galaxies we've seen before because the disks don't have arms. Yeah, I think I'm inclined to come down on the side of a spiral here too. Okay. All right. Well, that's category one. So let's go to the next one, which would be M104. Ooh. A little different viewpoint, but I think we can make it work. What do you all think? M104. Answers in chat. I see a lot of discs coming in. M1 spider, yeah. So it does look very disc-like. We can't really tell. <laughs> Some better <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I've heard that before, I think. Sombrero. It, it looks very disc-like, but from the point viewpoint that we're looking at it, it's hard to tell. It's, I, I, it's impossible to tell if it has mm -hmm. spiral arms, but it certainly looks Uniform. I'm going to go back to the answer that somebody said previously about the other galaxy. It's very uniform in the middle. Thank you. For you know the meaning, right? Thank you, of Daniel. Or in Spanish? Well, no, I just, I mean, I know what the hats look like, but I don't know what it means. Yeah, yeah, it's a hat. Yeah, exactly. Celeste, is, is there not a galaxy called the Sombrero Galaxy? Yes, yes, exactly. Is, is this it? it or is it? Yeah, yeah it, I think it's it, yeah. Okay. All right, next one. The naming changed here. It's not M, it's NGC, mm -hmm. which is a different, a different catalog of uh, classifying galaxies. It's just a... Uh, another way of naming them. So we're getting answered. I would say this is a spiral. Barred spiral. What do you mean by that? Yeah, Daniel, what do you mean by spiral? It has like a distinct bar in the middle of it. Yeah, so there seems to be a collection of stars across the middle. And it looks like hmm, some kind of a structure between the arms. We could call that a bar. Perfect. Fun fact, the Milky Way galaxy is also, some, uh, is also a barred spiral galaxy too. That's what they tell me. I've never seen it from afar. So let's go to the next one. Ooh, this is one we looked at before. Um, sorry, wait. Um... Yeah. What does bard mean? Like, I'm. Did you explain? I missed it. Sure. A bar, for example, um, if you do chin ups 
like you grab a bar and put chin ups. A bar is just a. Um, but I think in this context, we're just using it to say that the central bulge is not very bulge like, but instead it's more elongated and yeah, like elongated. That's the word I yeah. was looking for. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we are back to this guy again. We yep. kind of decided what we might call this already. It looks like it could be kind of a bar across there, but it's certainly a weirdo. I would agree. Well, but in science, it's the weird ones that are always the most interesting. <laughs> yeah, the, the special one. <laughs> so there's no discernible, really no discernible feature there that we can that we can hang our sombrero on. So let's just call it uh, category three, the organic irregular. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's see what we can wrap up. I can definitely see the arguments for sphere because it is very uniform, right? But no, I, yeah, it is very uniform, but it has the arms and the bar as Daniel says. It does have the arms, you know, it's not ball shaped, but it is uniform. So I can see where the sphere argument is coming from, but yeah, I would come down on spiral. You have to kind of look at the very outside. The arms yeah. are very faint, but I do see the arms there. So I think I would agree and probably call it a, a spiral. And I see the bar, that's pretty dominant, pretty predominant. So shall we go with uh, a spiral? Mm. Okay. So Either, either way. Now I think it's more organic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite weirdly shaped enough for that, I think. You can't decide whether it's a sphere or a bar, but it's pretty regularly shaped, mm -hmm. whatever it is. It seems yeah. to have a little bit of structure to it. Mm -hmm. I, I see it's the arms. Megan is still thinking about organic, and I think it could have some organic characteristics. See, this is what's difficult. Um, <laughs> if, if, we were, if we were taking a, a systematic scientific approach, one way we could have resolved this would maybe be to have more than three categories. So we- A uh, regular spiral. We, we could in fact, maybe come up with a scheme with more categories than just three. So this might be a little easier than the last one we wrestled with. Give me your answers in chat. What do you think? Or just speak up. Either way, put them in chat if you want to. Sphere, sphere. Sphere. Yeah. I think we can just call this a sphere. Yeah. All right, we can yeah. call oh, this a right. sphere. Round, evenly distributed, but we're going to call it a sphere. So for the galaxy feature, uh-huh, let's just say. Uh, bright and ball-like. Bright and ball-like, I like that. Let's just call it mm -hmm. bright and ball-like. Um, Dave, I have a question. How do we know if this is a galaxy? As opposed to? As opposed to other forms of celestial objects, I suppose. I mean, if we were the first scientists to actually look at it, how, do we, how would we know if this is an actual galaxy or some other object? Right, not to minimize your question. It's a great question. I'm going to let uh, Vandana answer that because that's her specialty. If you say another celestial object, it's basically either a star or a galaxy, right? As far as sources of light go. The reason we don't think it's a star is because of how fuzzy the edges are. It's not, stars are point objects, okay? They're very small and the edges are very well defined and if they're very close by and very bright sometimes you'll see these um diffraction spikes it's too big it's too fuzzy and um it's like not sharp enough to be a star um that's why we think it's a galaxy hubble used a similar classification to what we did he classified galaxies based on their shape right so first he decided that they were either, um, well, okay, he classified them into this tuning fork. Dave, if you could please, the tuning fork. It has nothing to do with astronomy other than Hubble's model looks like a tuning fork. That's so right. there's a tuning fork 
Vandana, go ahead. Mm -hmm. He first decides if, whether or not a galaxy has a disk. If it does have a disk, it falls onto the right side of the tuning fork. If it doesn't, it's on the left side. All the galaxies on the left side are the so-called ellipticals, which is pretty much what we called a sphere in our classification. It's stuff that's more or less uniform, doesn't really have any identifiable features. The numbers on the ellipticals, like it goes from E0 to E5, that demonstrates how, how symmetrical it is in a sense. So for example, you can see that E0 looks very, very circular, right? But E5 is quite different. One axis is much longer than the other. It's much more elliptical. So um, the number represents how elliptical it is, how um, different the axes are from each other, right? Now, if the galaxy has a disk, but it doesn't have clear spiral arms, then it's a so-called S0 type galaxy, which means it's not quite uniform enough to be called an elliptical. It does have like a noticeable bright center and then a fainter disk, but it doesn't have the clear spiral arms. So that one galaxy where we got kind of caught up in debate, that you might classify it, um, whether it was an elliptical or a spiral. I mean, um, now, if the galaxy does have a clear set of spiral arms, then it could be either a normal spiral, if the center is, central bulge is very compact and circular, or in the other case, when the central bulge is elongated and um, yeah, bar-like, then it's a barred spiral. And as you move from left to right in the tuning fork, um, for both the spirals and the barred spirals, the spiral arms become more and more loosely wound. So um, in the SA or SBA, like spiral or barred spiral A case, they're very tightly wound. So they coil around the center very tightly. On the other hand, if it is towards the other end, spiral or barred spiral case C, the arms coil very loosely. So you, you might have only like two arms, which are kind of, instead of being like a coil, it would be more S-shaped. But there are still distinct spiral arms, so it does still, like it still has distinct arms, so it's still considered to be a spiral, right? Um, and yeah, I think this came up while we were going through our 11 galaxies, but the Milky Way is in fact a barred spiral. Um, we have never seen the Milky Way edge on. This is just our inference based on knowing the positions of all the stars in the Milky Way which we can do because, you know, we're in the Milky Way. We can't really map the positions of individual stars for any other galaxy. I mean, you guys did a great job. We basically came up with a classification identical to Hubble's. So, you know, go us. So um, one thing I'd like to say is um, I mentioned uh, as we were going through our 11 galaxies, Messier's catalog from the 1700s, right? And um, another set of galaxies came up which start, whose name started with NGC. That stands for New General Catalog, which was a catalog that came up, created a bit later, um, it, well, quite a bit later in the 1900s. Um, but in order to really study galaxies well, we want to have a lot of galaxies to study. And this is important, especially in astronomy, because astronomy is one subject where you have absolutely no control over what you're looking at. I mean, in other aspects of physics, you can tweak your experiment, you can control the settings. You can't really tell a star, okay, now please explode as a supernova. You, you work with what you get. So um, in order to really get a good sample, make sure you capture all the properties out there, you need a big set of galaxies, you need to create a big catalog, and that's what we try to do through large-scale galaxy surveys, right? So far, the largest scale survey till date is the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which found almost 1 billion galaxies. And that's the image to the right. Uh, it's an image from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Every single point here is a, one galaxy and the color shows you how far away from us it is. So the green points are kind of closer and the yellow and red points are further and further away from us. Now, in the future, um, starting, I think, um, I'm, I don't quite remember if it's 2023 or 2025, um, but starting shortly, 
the Vera C. Rubin Observatory is going to start a 10 year survey of the sky. And that survey is going to find almost 20 billion galaxies. So um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like we have some exciting days ahead of us in astronomy. Yeah, definitely. So I think that the, to wrap up, we can see the couple of videos. Uh, so these are simulations uh, from, yeah, different, well, from uh, ELACTRIS TNG is a cosmological hydrodynamical simulation. And what you are going to see now is uh, how, well, a description of a set of galaxies and how they evolve across cosmic time to finish in an amazing uh, spiral galaxy. Uh, I will try to speed up a little bit here. So you can see that, well, here, this is what we call, yeah, it's a way to quantify uh, the time. So when it's going down this number, we are approaching to present. So it's going quite fast. So it's really happening in millions of years, all this activity. And what you can see is the interaction between yeah, different galaxies, different sizes, how this, um, how the shape of the different uh, tiny or large galaxies changes in time. So again, we, we see uh, different uh, over dense regions that are different galaxies that are uh, growing in, in, in shape because they are merging, stars are forming in, in these uh, over dense regions. Also gas is being accreted in time. Let's speed up. So we have, again, lots of several galaxies in this uh, sub-regions, sub-box of the universe. Sometimes you see that the, here, again, we have uh, spirals. We, have, we can identify for some of them arms. But then the, the mergers between galaxies sometimes uh, uh, make that the, the galaxies create uh, finish or end up uh, having this shape of a spherical shape and bright shape, uh, like in the case of elliptical galaxies, right? what we identify as elliptical. So here you see it's very uh, stochastic, right? They're very random, the interaction of gas, dust, stars. And this, uh, this interaction create this, this uh, spherical shape at the end. I want to give everybody a chance to, if, if anybody has a question, um, now's the time. Do you have, anybody have a question they want to ask? You have two uh, galaxy experts here with us. They can take you back in time, take you into the future. Do you have any questions for our experts? So, uh, I, have, I have one question. Yeah. Will we, uh, I don't know if they would be able to answer this, but ever in the future would we be able to go out of a galaxy to get to a different galaxy? Okay, so that's very out of the realm of science and into the realm of sci-fi now. Um, the problem is galaxies are hundreds of light years or not even hundreds, I think it's thousands of light years in size, which means it takes even like thousands of years to cover a galaxy. And we can't go faster than the speed of light. So um, someday, maybe if someone actually comes up with faster than light travel or like warp holes, maybe. But practically speaking, we should probably start with maybe getting to another star in our own galaxy <laughs> first, or maybe even another planet in our own solar system. That, that's probably, like, I, I would like to see Mars, people actually getting to Mars while I'm still alive. That would be nice. Um, 
So let's wrap up with a question from, um, let's see, from Nellie. What's your favorite galaxy and why? So let's ask our two experts. My favorite one is this, and it's, it's not very interesting, really, if you see a picture, you can Google it. Uh, and it's because it was the first uh, galaxy where we were able to detect um, gravitational wave event and a kilonova, a short gamma ray burst. That's my favorite one. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, um, mine is probably M87 for, for a similar reason to Celeste. Um, M87 is the first galaxy where we actually caught an image of its black hole, its central supermassive black hole. Um, yeah, so at this, I think this did come up during um, the discussion before, but at the center of every galaxy, there lives um, a gigantic, like billion times the mass of the sun sized black hole. And uh, pretty recently, there was this huge international collaboration called the Event Horizon Telescope, and they actually managed to take a proper image of the black hole. Uh, in M81, the supermassive black hole in M81. So M81 is cool. Vandana and, and uh, Celeste, thank you very much. We've enjoyed the presentation. I've learned a lot and uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I will be emailing you about uh, future SMAP events. So until then, uh, let's say ciao, goodbye, and uh, we'll see you in the future. Thanks. Okay, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Goodbye. Thank you.